Justin, thank you so much for joining us here at Fun Forum International. Pleasure. Let's start off by asking the big question. What makes a viable asset management company in 2016? Imagination, some real imagination. You look at the industry at the moment and it looks like Sleepy Hollow half the time. Everyone busily looking inside to actually see what everybody else is doing. Wrong way around. If you want to develop any industry, you've got to look outside. And I find it fascinating that it's almost traditional in an industry. We tend to talk about how many assets do we have. We don't have any assets. It's their assets and it's a privilege to look after that. And so always remember, it's their money, not ours. Now, what do they, our clients, actually need to have? So spend less time actually examining our own navels as to what's going on. Spend more time examining, well, maybe not other people's navels, but actually understanding <laughs> what it is they want to achieve. And what do those customers want? What are they demanding a modern customer? Well, rule one of investing. I remember this taught this donkey's years ago by a dear fellow, Richard Durlach, who used to run Wed Durlach. He said, rule one, Justin, investing, don't lose the sodding stuff. Oh, jolly good. Thank you, sir. What's rule two? Refer to rule one. <laughs> the point being is actually, actually, if you lose 50%, it's not 50% back up again. You've got to double your money. Investing is a long-term game. And if you can do that over time, and then you'll make money for people. The other issue thing we've got to do is educate people. Certainly in the United Kingdom, but also in many other countries around the world, we teach people economics. Just how many more economists do you want to have in your life? In fact, I don't think I need any economists in my life. We need to teach people finance. So when they come out of school, when they come out of university, they have some idea even how to pay a mortgage. Now, how to save for something. Why should they save for something? Because at the moment, we expect them to actually give money to us. Why? Well, that's what you're supposed to do. Well, why? Give them the reasons to do so in their language, not ours. And what does that mean in their language? Because obviously, these, this generation are using smartphones for everything yep. and technology. It means embracing that, doesn't it? It, it does. And it doesn't mean patronizing gits and red braces, trying to be terribly cool and down with the lads as to what they're supposed to be doing. That's awful. What you can do is go to the where areas that they're looking at and operating, look at the game software companies. And one of the reasons we found this was useful is some of our own clients wrote software games. And they'd sold their business for an well, extremely good sum of money, and we have the privilege of looking after it. But they didn't understand anything that we did. So we made the words shorter, turned up the color, didn't make any difference. Actually, what you realized was the way in which they were describing things and understanding was completely different to what we were doing. And that's what this generation of new customers that's expect it. that's how they speak show me on my smart pad my smart ipad or phone or whatever it happens to be show me something which actually is going to tell me what happens at the end of it so one of the key things is to actually then make sure that if people have a pension who's interested in a pension but tell me what it does tell me what happens in the future if i put in various things as a game so i find out when does the money run out when can i retire when am I planning to die? Or when are other people in my family planning to die? That can be helped. Um, but all those things, to actually then give you the one word that runs an economy, runs our own finances, confidence. In many ways, our industry thinks we actually provide confidence to people. Actually, we provide a lot of fear to people because I'm saving my money and I sort of hope it's going to be enough. If you can find a way of them understanding, it's actually it's okay. You don't need huge returns. Slow and steady over a long period of time will be fine. You talked there about over a long period of time. Is that quite hard to convey, though, to a generation that are quite demanding? They want things now. They're used to things happening quickly. Yes, if you put it in the right perspective. If you go along and say, I can guarantee you, you're going to get this return within a few years. Well, A, you're going to be wrong. Um, but also, you know, they'll see, see, see through you. If you can actually find a mechanism whereby you can show over a period of time, if you do this, that happens, and they can see it visually uh, and really see what the application actually provides, then it makes more sense. A classic example of this is going to businesses setting up and people leaving university. Talking to them about pensions, no relevance at all. Talking to them about actually filling in the information so that in 70 years' time they can see when the money runs up, now I know what you're talking about. That's why I need to, whether it's a pension or not, I need to put money aside over the longer term. Not just me, but as a family and doing that. And again, our industry has educated, no, it hasn't educated, it's told people, sold people, the idea that you need another financial product. No, you don't. Don't buy another financial product. If, this is a corny old line. If you're planning to invest, don't. That's me out of a job. Invest in planning. Get the planning right, everything fits in. Then everything that actually is being provided here at the conference would then actually make sense. It fits into it. Don't tell people all the products. That doesn't make any sense. People don't want to know about bricks. Show me what the house looks like. If I know what the house looks like, I then decide what type of brick I need.
So do you think that realistically when you come to a conference like that, you're seeing this industry embrace that attitude yet? Or do you think that there's still resistance to change? Because it does need to evolve, doesn't it? No, these people, like Luddites look exciting. I, I've, you know, there are some people who are obviously trying to challenge things. There are other people trying to say, actually, we're defending what we've been doing for years. No, I've, the financial services industry is at its best when it's trying to tear itself down and reinvent itself, find better ways of doing things. And think over the years, what's happened? You know, we've seen in stock exchanges move from really old-fashioned cobwebbed areas, which we regard as the traditional way of doing it. It's not, but that's how we've, so our memory has sort of worked it out, that we think that was the way of doing it, into operating with good actives, good passives, lower cost, better efficiency, greater access. It's come on a long way, but it needs actually to learn from its clients, not just trying to learn from itself. Look outside, stop focusing on the inside the entire time. You said there, look outside, and you believe that we should look to other industries entirely as well oh. for that sort of help. Yes, two key areas. One, software industry, because they are selling things to people of another generation, which they enjoy doing. Their entire style of life is different, but ours hasn't changed. Also, in terms of just straightforward marketing, if you are being really cynical about our industry, our industry, is it an investment business or is it actually a marketing and technology business, which happens to involve investment? And if you focus on those two areas, you're still going to need really, really good investment. You need really good engines behind you. But don't sell the engines. Sell actually the, the whole process so that people actually understand what it is. They, they're getting something that they need, not something that I want you to have. So are you having exciting conversations this week? Are you, are you positive about the direction the industry is going in? Yes, I'm really excited. There is so much going on, which is because the technology allows it to change. I fear for certain companies that unless they change, they will die. But actually, that's quite normal in any industry. You know, the older trees will fall over and die. Unless you change, you will die. Uh, but the, the ability to change is certainly there. But it taints a change of management and attitude. The large corporations will revert back to, you've got to achieve your numbers, as opposed to, yes, you've got to achieve your numbers, having looked after the client. Get that the right way around. The last organization I worked for, which I got, well, business got taken over by a large corporation, went straight back to that. You are back to the greasy pole mentality. You'll organise a business for some time, but longer term, that will eventually fail because you're not looking after your clients. Exciting times ahead, Justin. Thank you so much for joining My us. Pleasure. Good to talk. Thank you.